Good morning everyone. Hi, hello. My name is CJ and I am back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to enjoy uh, watching and hopefully we can learn a thing or two from it uh, with me narrating. Uh, today we are doing another one of my illustrations that I turn in for the Daily Spit Paint group in Facebook. Uh, again, for the ones who are not familiar with the group, we do daily speed paints or basically speed painting uh, you get 30 minutes to finish an illustration based on four prompts so you get to pick one of the prompts and then of course you have 30 minutes to do a sketch illustration speed paint whatnot uh, so yeah uh, for this particular day way back in uh, whoa <laughs> January 29 of 2021 uh, so yeah, practically a year ago. Um, so one of the particular prompts for that particular day about a year ago is Penguin Troop. So yeah, um, I was trying to remember exactly what my train of thought was when I picked this particular prompt when I was working on it, uh, but I could not for the life of me remember what I was that I was thinking. If I... If I'm not wrong, it was probably one of my very, very blank days. Sometimes I get those days where I just don't know what to do, don't know what to draw. None of the prompts are very inspiring or not so much as it's inspiring. It just none of the prompts clicked in my head per se. Um, so, and I don't remember if I did Google image search too, because sometimes w when I read the prompt, I automatically get an image. If I don't get an image, then I would do a Google image search uh, to just to kind of jog my brain, my memory, get some inspiration from some of the stuff that I had seen. Uh, I think I might have done a search for penguin troops for this particular instance, but I think for the most part, I was still uninspired from anything that I've seen or thought of in my head. So... I think at this point that we are watching, I literally just started sketching. Um, so yeah, uh, I have a feeling that that was the case and that was my train of thought. Everything was just kind of blank in my head. And so I was just like, I'm just gonna start sketching. And this is pretty much what I came up with. Um, so yeah, uh, I just started basically sketching a bunch of shapes um i think one of the images that i saw was a video maybe that's what it was it wasn't so much as an image that i saw i think it was a video but i do remember seeing some form of snow fog snow haze something where it was kind of like obstructed where the visibility was very very low and i knew that i kind of wanted to play that into the illustration and so when I started drawing the penguin troops, I kind of knew that some of them were going to be fading in the back. That's kind of indicated by some of the fact that I didn't fully sketch out that very, very back penguin uh, in the middle. You can see him just, I just pretty much just sketch his head and, and I didn't do his body. And that's pretty much indicative of me thinking that I'm going to fade a lot of these characters out. And so... I knew that I really wanted to employ that technique um, because of either a video I've seen or an image I've seen. I do not remember. Again, it was one of my blank days where like the image in my head wasn't very, very strong. And I was just kind of just going with the flow, trying to see where things um, take me. And this is basically what this experiment was. So anyways, I did a quick sketch obviously we just got finished watching that as soon as i did my sketch i duplicated a layer multiple times so i could basically darken my sketch uh there's actually easier techniques of doing this now um uh, but this was the technique that i was using way back in the day um and as soon as I have my dark layer, I basically would start my coloring process. My coloring process is really wild, is really crazy. I really try to approach my coloring messy is what I do versus rather than uh, having it so much more structured. Um, part of the reason why I try to be wild and crazy with my coloring scheme is because I really am trying to create happy accidents in a way um if you are familiar with bob ross and its slogan happy accidents 
you know, basically the idea is that there's no such thing as accidents. Everything is a happy mistake kind of deal. Um, you know, in art, it's basically true. If you made a mistake, you can cover up that mistake. You can work around that mistake. You can fix that mistake in a way. And basically with my coloring, I, I kind of approach things like that in a manner where I basically just color wild, color crazy. I take this brush, random mech brush in Krita. It's created by David Ravoy. Um, and I set it to vary its hue. And then I would just start coloring with this brush basically. And it gives me a bunch of different shapes, a bunch of different hues. And then as soon as I kind of get the general pattern of the colors that I'm looking for, I start to smudge things around into recognizable shapes. Now this is the most important aspect of my process basically, is the recognizable shapes and the smudging of things. The reason why I do, or the reason why I throw in so many different colors and so many different shapes initially, is I knew eventually I'm going to smudge all of this um, mess down into like recognizable shapes that I could basically uh, paint over. Um, when I do this thing, sometimes it creates really cool patterns. Sometimes it really creates cool colors. And this is basically why I do things um, is because I'm always on the lookout for something cool that happens at this stage of my creation process. It typically don't <laughs> work very well most of the time. Most of the time is just straight up garbage, straight up mess, um, which is fine because again, like I said, I always just work around it, you know? But there are very, very cool moments that happen that I'm just like totally, it's just totally unexpected. This is one of those illustrations that was just unexpected for me um basically when i started out this illustration i basically had the um, inclination of doing the colors to be predominantly like the way you would see it with penguins penguins are predominantly black and white right and i initially kind of thought of like doing it that way so basically when I was going to lay down my colors, I was just going to not care about what the colors are because eventually I was kind of thinking that it, that I would end up painting a lot of the colors over with black and white and then it would just end up gravitating towards grayscale anyways. But in the end, I didn't end, end up doing any of it because the colors that I chose, this predominantly blue palette that we're looking at on the top right, you could actually see the palette that I use. It's an eight color scheme that I got from the color palette sent in my website. It's all blues with a hint of a brown and gray, right? And and I really love their color palette, you know? Like again, like I said, I was just gonna paint over it with black and white, but in the end, I ended up preserving a lot of those very, very um, vivid blues because they just work great, you know? Um, and it makes it a really cool, interesting piece because penguins are predominantly not blue. <laughs> they're, they're not really blue. So it kind of makes it unique because we don't really see blue penguins in nature. So obviously this is just totally made up, right? But anyways, this is the reason why I decided to make a lesson out of it because this is one of those things where I kind of had a happy accident of sorts. Um, it was all just kind of like a mixture of things that was going on where I, I didn't really have a clue as to what I was doing. I, I kind of knew that I wanted to play with the fog haze effect. That's pretty much a thing I just remember thinking very vividly, very strongly in my head. As for everything else, I was just kind of like, let's just go with the flow kind of deal, right? And let's just do black and white traditional penguin troops or traditional penguin colors. But in the end, I didn't even end up doing that just because I love those color palette that initially started out with. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, I just love this illustration just because of that. It just... A wonderful happy accident happened so but anyways going back to the process which is what i <laughs> was initially talking about i smudge things around into recognizable shapes um and then as soon as i get my base layer my base paint i would start my detailing process my detailing process is pretty much a three-step process it's basically 
I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that my shapes would be clearer. I accentuate the shadows. If the shadows need a little bit darkening, I darken it a little more. And then I add highlights. So basically, it's a three-step process that I repeat every, uh, over and over again in all parts of my illustration. In this particular case, majority of the background is pretty much done because it's all just foggy snow going on in the scene, right? And so the background is pretty much done. I obviously started working on the characters. And of course, I started out in the back characters. You can see that I left the back characters very loose. Um, I outlined them a little bit, but not so much because I knew that I wanted them to fade in the snow fog case. Um, and then now I'm working in the foreground, as you can see. So um, Let's just watch me do my thing for a few minutes and I'll just come back a little later on in the video to talk more about this piece.
So I picked that particular uh, very vivid cyan on the lower left and ended up putting it somewhere else in the canvas because I really absolutely love the vividness of that particular hue. So as you can see, I ended up putting it on the wings of the two front penguins. And then I covered it up in shadows because obviously that area needed to be in shadow. Um, again, I'm accentuating my shadows. Um, simply, so yeah, I simply took it out or I took that particular hue out because I knew that that area needed to be in shadow and not to be in, and that it wasn't um, in highlight basically. So yeah, but I knew that I wanted to keep that hue. So obviously I moved it over on the wings. But again, this is what I mean about like the whole happy accident uh, scenario where sometimes I just threw in a bunch of colors, just make it, you know, I just go wild, crazy, not very structured in my coloring process. And sometimes I come up with colors that I didn't really consciously think of as being cool, but then it ended up being cool. Again, that cyan, the very vivid cyan is a great example of that. Um, if I had consciously thought of where I was going to put my colors, I would never have put a very bright, vivid cyan in the shadow area because it doesn't go there, right? I would have put something dark. Um, but since I was going wild and crazy in my coloring scheme initially, I ended up um, having that happy accident, which I obviously then employed somewhere else in my particular illustration. So yeah, I, I, I love my coloring. Honestly, I do just because of this whole crazy mess that I make again, like I mentioned, I, most of the time, I don't really come up with really cool stuff like that all the time. So half the time that I employ this technique, I'm like, why am I doing it this way again? But I got used to it. And so I just decided to just keep working with it and yeah, just keep going with the flow in a way, you know, I mean, I could always recover fairly quickly when I do it this way anyway. So even if I do end up with a mistake, that's a really bad mistake. Most of the time I could fix it fairly quick with no loss in my time creation, basically in my art creation process. So yeah. But the few times that, you know, things end up working out for me, it's just, it's just really cool to see again, you know, blue penguins is very, very cool. Totally unexpected. Did not consciously think about it. Did not consciously think, oh yeah, I'm just going to draw them in blue. Again, like I said, I did speak, I did pick a specific blue palette, but that was more accidental more than anything else because again like i mentioned i was going to cover them up initially anyways with black and white you know i was thinking i'll just start with any color palette so really i could have started out with red or green or any of those color palettes and eventually i would have just covered them up with black and white or so i thought until i fell in love with the blue and then that's when I decided, you know what, I'll just go with the blue. So I ended up with a blue palette that looks really, really cool, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, I'm absolutely happy with the way this turned out. It just turned out very, very cool. So and this is pretty much for my speed paint. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty much done. I'm just basically looking at it and trying to decipher last minute changes that I'd want to do. Um, obviously, I messed around a lot with the angle of it. I knew I wanted it to be a little angled, uh, so it's a little bit more dynamic rather than have it be straight horizontal. So as you can see, I'm like flipping it back and forth, just checking to see if the angle is right. And for the most part, I think I'm happy with it. So yeah. There it is. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Good night. <laughs>